Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. So welcome to the podcast, everybody, uh, from a windy sidewell today. And uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, ways to fund your private pilot training. I'm going to give you 10 ways that you could either fund your training or support your training costs. Some of them you may not have thought about. Some of them might even sound a bit far out. But these are 10 genuine ways that you could either support your flight training costs or pay for them entirely. Now the average student is currently spending between 13 and 17,000 pounds on a private pilot's license now in 2023 and an LAPL somewhere between 9 and 14,000 if you take into account the average additional hours required and multiple attempts at exams. So one thing we're really keen on is talking about ways in which you can fund the training and also we're really keen on you not getting into debt to do that. I think that's really, really important because generally if you're getting into debt for this end of the training, when you finish, you still need to be able to afford to fly to keep your ratings current. And at that point, you're going to be servicing the debt you accrued in your flight training with interest. Um, so it's highly likely at that point, unless your financial circumstances have, have um, improved, that it's going to be difficult for you to afford to fly to maintain your rating and pay off that debt. So please, please do not get into a debt for PPL or LAPL training. Only caveat to that is obviously if you're going into PPL training for the purpose of then going on to commercial flying, then at some point you're going to be paid for your flight training. So that is the only circumstance where I'd say, you know, debt's an option. But again, I really wouldn't recommend it. So for the average person, they're going to be uh, looking at our first way of uh, funding your training, which will be disposable income or savings. So the ideal scenario would be savings because um, you've got all of the funds there potentially to do the flight training, which means you can do it on a more accelerated process, which will reduce your costs down. So if you do have savings to do it, that would be the best way to do it because like I say, you can do the training more economically um, on an intensive basis, which means overall, generally, you will do it in less hours. From a disposable income point of view, you need to be looking at how much you can afford to spend each month on flight training and sticking to a budget. Now, if you're looking for help on how to budget for your flight training, we have a really good um, learn to fly guide, which is free. It's on our website, almat.co.uk. Go to the free stuff section, download that guide, um, that guide, it's about two and a half hours worth of information if I was to sit here and talk you through it. So please read through that. That will give you information about the different licenses available. It will give you information about budgeting, training options, all of that good stuff. But currently, if we look at what the average person spends, it's going to be somewhere in the region on a four-seat aircraft of about £260 an hour if you take into account any fuel surcharges, landing fees, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's on, on a four-seat aircraft. I would say up to £230 an hour on a two-seat aircraft in 2023, if you include, again, fuel, uh, fuel surcharges and landing fees. So you need to work out how many times a month you could afford to spend that. And as I've said many, many times before, if you can only afford to fly once a month, I would recommend highly that you don't do it. You wait till the time's better and then go at it when you can fly twice a month or more. So first is disposable income or savings, but the key is make a budget. So work out what you can afford to spend and stick to it religiously. Now, the more economically you do your training, the better results you will get. Tip number two is look at your current financial situation. So for many of us, there are subscriptions that we pay out each month that we don't use. So I've, I've done this exercise myself and realised that I'm still paying for things that are 
you know, maybe it's not a, not a lot of money. It may be like four ninety nine a month for a subscription to something that we no longer use. It might be something more considerable, like you know, thirty something pound a month for something again that we've forgotten we use. So definitely worth looking through your bank statements, cancelling any subscriptions that you have that you no longer use. And could you make savings on some of the things that you do? Like maybe you could cut back on your bills, you know, maybe you could negotiate with energy suppliers, all that kind of things to bring your um, income back in line with what you need for your flight training. In fact, we even spoke to a student recently who had actually sold his car um, because it was it was quite expensive finance he had on the car and got something more economical in order that he could afford to do his flight training, which he found to be more important to him. So again, it is a case of priorities, really. Have a look through your, your bank statement, see if there's any areas you can cut back on that would allow you to fly more frequently. And if you have got something really big and expensive that's just a vanity item like a car that perhaps when you got it at the time was really important to you, but now is less important and the flight training is more important, Perhaps you could do what he did, get a, a cheaper car to, to run and find more money for your flight training. So third tip is, could you find additional income streams? So that might include uh, working overtime, for example. It might be a second job in the evenings. Or could you get a side hustle? Could you start something up yourself? Do you have skills that you could sell on sites like People Per Hour, Fiverr, Skillshare? You know, maybe um, maybe you play guitar or an instrument as a hobby and you could teach people online. Um, maybe you do video editing or graphic design or you could do some sort of tutoring online. Like maybe you're really good at maths and you could tutor kids online and, you know, help them get through their school exams and things. These type of things people get paid, you know, 10, 20, 30 pounds an hour to do. Um, could you set up an e-commerce business selling products online on, on sites like Etsy or eBay or um, Shopify, that kind of thing? There are lots of things you could do to get yourselves additional income which could support your flight training costs. If you're a creative person, we know people actually make money from things like Patreon, for subscribers on Patreon. Um, if you can build an audience on Patreon with perhaps some YouTube content, I know people who make money from doing that. So it could be something really creative other than just finding extra work. There could be things you could do as part of your hobbies that could generate you money. You know, I know people who um, vlog about things that they do as hobbies and get paid subscribers that pay them for watching their YouTube channel. So, you know, be creative with how you fund. There are lots of different things out there you could do. Uh, crowdfunding, so there are online platforms such as GoFundMe and Just Giving that are places where you can seek financial assistance from others. Now, I've known people have used those sites for other purposes, but there's nothing to say that you couldn't get additional funding from those type of platforms if you were brave enough to put yourself out there. Next thing is selling what you no longer need. Now, I did this recently because I'm kind of a hoarding type of person where I will buy things and keep them for years, years and years after I don't use them. I recently found over a thousand pounds worth of things that I no longer use, that I have no intention of using anymore, that need to go on eBay. So if you're struggling to fund your, your PPL or LAPL training, you know, a thousand pounds will get you a fair few lessons towards your training. So perhaps it's worthwhile looking through the things that you no longer use um, and see if they're worth putting on eBay, see if you can uh, get rid of those things. And if you're a real bad hoarder, that might be several thousands of pounds, but it's definitely worth looking at. So that's tip number five is sell what you no longer need. Tip number six is uh, sponsorships. So we recently um, had two people who were lucky enough to get sponsorships from their employers. So yeah, that might sound absolutely nuts to you that your employer might pay for your training or part of your training, but we've had two people who went to their employers and they had um, benefits within their employment, which enabled them to get funding from the employer towards training. Now it didn't say what that training was, so they had to go to their boss and say, look, you know, I know I can use this for training, but would you consider this as something that would further me as a person and would you consider helping me fund it? And guess what, they got some funding. They didn't get all of the funding they need, but they both got several thousands of pounds worth of training 
paid for through their employer. So it's definitely worth speaking to your employer and just having that conversation, telling them what you're doing. You know, I'm planning on becoming a private pilot. These are the reasons why. And this is what the training involves. Could I use funding allocated me for, for training for that purpose? I'm not saying it's, you know, that they will. They might actually laugh at you and say, don't do that. But it's definitely worth an ask because I know two people who've had sponsorship. Also, talk to your family and friend, family especially. You might find that, you know, perhaps you've got an aunt or somebody like that who would be happy to, to help sponsor you with your training, even give you funds that you did as a loan rather than a sponsorship. So perhaps you could get a loan from the family rather than taking out a loan um, with a, a normal credit uh, provider where they, they perhaps would lend you the money without paying interest. So that's another interesting uh, angle on that is perhaps you could get sponsorships or loans from your family to do that. And, you know, perhaps it's not all of the money, but it might be a few grand towards the training, which you couldn't find otherwise. So that's tip number six, look for sponsorship. So that could be your family, could be your employer, could be friends, could be anyone, but there are reasons why people might want to help you. So tip number seven then is scholarships. There are lots of scholarships available for private pilots. There are companies such as Fantasy Wings, which we work with. Now they specifically specialize in BAME community and they're an incredible company. We've had several people from them already who have got scholarships with us at Almat. Um, so if you're a BAME community, definitely look at Fantasy Wings and contact them. Um, otherwise, there are ones like the Honourable League of Air Pilots. Um, there's a really good publication called the Flight Training News, which has a list of current scholarships that are available. OK, it's got a list of different providers. Now, those scholarships vary from five hour scholarships, 10 hour scholarships, 20 hour scholarships, all the way up to fully funded PPL and, and LAPLs. But Ultimately, any help you can get if you're struggling to finance it is going to be welcome, I'm sure. So look at scholarships as well. Look at the flight training news. And on that note, I just want to plug our own scholarship. So we have a scholarship available from our Matt Flying Academy. We started this in 2022 as a result of working with Fantasy, uh, Fantasy Wings and the Honourable League of Air Pilots. And last year, we gave away one 10 hour scholarship to our um, winner, Leo, who's now flying with us at our Cywell location. So if you're interested in registering for our scholarship, please go onto our website, almat.co.uk. Go to the home page. There's information about the scholarship on there. How it works is you will need to register your interest via that page. All that does is tell us you're interested in scholarships and put you onto our mailing list. After that point, we will email you with updates as to what's happening with the scholarship, the events that are going on around the scholarship. Now, to be clear, we are raising money to fund these places. So when I first launched this scholarship last year, we actually had some very skeptical people who were saying, oh, there is no scholarship place. You know, it's it, there is, I can categorically guarantee you, there is one scholarship place at least going to be issued this year um, towards the back end of the year. We, we announced it at the end of August last year. It's going to be a little bit later this year. And we will introduce you to uh, Leo, our previous um, scholarship winner as well. And with that scholarship, you will get some flight hours, some flight equipment, and some free ground school bonuses as well. So it's really, really worth um, entering yourself for that because it's gonna give you a huge chunk towards your training, but it is not a fully funded scholarship. It's a part funded scholarship. So yeah, go on there on the website, almat.co.uk, register your interest, and then we'll update you as to what is happening with the scholarship this year. Now, how we raise the money for the scholarships is we run several events. Those events are called Aspiring Pilots Days, okay? So you will need to pay to come on one of the Aspiring Pilots Days in 2023 to be considered for a scholarship place. And the funds that we raise from those events will be what pays for the scholarship place or scholarship places that we give away. Now, these are really exciting days. So on the day, you'll get a flight, 
You'll also get a flight as a passenger this year, which is something we've done different to last year. So you'll get a flight as a pilot where you're being under instruction. You'll get a flight as a passenger where you can just sit and relax while somebody else has their flight. You'll get to talk to us about the scholarship itself, what it includes. You'll get your opportunity to fill in an application and actually apply for it. We'll help you do that on the day. And also you'll get to talk to an airline pilot about his career in airlines and um, how that came about and how potentially you could do similar things. So it's a jam packed day full of fun. So you'll get a, a flight as a pilot, a flight as a passenger, get to speak to the team, get to speak about the scholarship and speak to airline pilots about careers on the aspiring pilots day. There are gonna be four aspiring pilots days in 2023 in the summer. So when you join the mailing list, we will notify you of when those dates are coming up. So that's scholarship. So like I say, they can provide you with part funding or full funding. Um, tip number eight is, if you're struggling to fund your flight training, see if you could perhaps volunteer at your flying school and raise some hours towards your training. So I've known this at some flying schools whereby you can get volunteer work in exchange for a flight lesson. So you have to give some of your time away for free. Um, as a volunteer and in exchange, they will give you X amount of flight time uh, to do that. Now, obviously we know that flight training is expensive, so you may have to uh, sacrifice several hours of your time in order to do that, but I've known people do it. We've also done it in the past as well. So there's no harm in asking your flight school if you could volunteer in exchange for a flight. So other thing, and, and this is number nine, is exchange of services. So that kind of goes in line with the volunteering thing, but could you, do you know, do you have a skill that your flight school may need? So perhaps you're a marketing consultant, perhaps you're a web developer or a social media expert or accountant or, or, or anything like that. You know, perhaps there's some skill that you might have that your flight school might see as an exchange of value. Maybe you're a videographer, for example. Perhaps you could speak to your flying school and say, look, I've got these skills. I'm struggling to raise the funding for my flight training. So do you need any of my skills? Could I offer you this in exchange for so many hours of flight training? And obviously you put a value on your time, the flight school puts a value on the flying time. So you'd have to meet an agreement as to what the exchange of service would be as in how much time you would have to give in return for the flying. But I have had people come to me with this, you know, this example. I had a guy come to me um, talking about YouTube and things like that, um, offering his service in exchange for flight time. Now, it's difficult because, you know, like I say, you put value on your time, we put value on flight training because it costs us money to deliver. So, um, you know, you'd have to agree what the rate of exchange would be, if you want to call it that, an exchange rate. Um, but it's totally possible that somebody could have a skill out there that a flying school may need and they may not even know it, and that might result in you getting additional flying. So that's tip number nine, exchange of services. Tip number 10, and this is the last one, and this isn't so much about um, funding your flight training as such, but it's definitely a tip about how you can save money on your flight training. So it's no surprise that if you do your flight training over a long period of time, as in you're doing once a month, twice a month, um, it's going to take you more hours than somebody who is flying every week. That is something we see all of the time. So the longer it takes time-wise to do your training, the more hours you are likely to need to train. And as a result, will be higher cost. So what I would say to you is, is really take heed of that. You know, if, if you're doing your flight training and you're gonna do it over several years, be expecting to be doing a lot more hours than somebody who does it over a shorter period of time. And what's more, you're gonna get several increases in the cost of your flight training just with inflation over that period. So it makes sense that the shorter period of time you do it, A, you're gonna do less backtracking with your training. So you're gonna, you're gonna do the training in less hours generally. And also that means less hours becomes cheaper. So do it over a shorter period of time, you're gonna spend less money on hours, but you're gonna experience less price increases as well. So in terms of saving money, doing it intensively is definitely a way 
of saving money. As an alternative to that, there are things called block booking schemes, which some schools operate. We don't, but some schools operate discounts for buying bulk hours. Um, that's okay, but one word of caution is that if you're buying bulk hours, is that that school then has your money, and that's not something we recommend. So although you know paying in installments isn't a bad thing as in if it's small installments but if you're talking like five ten grand blocks then that's a risk you know if you're dealing with a flying school who's a limited company which you know most companies are limited companies um then if they go bust be aware that if they have your money and it's lots of money that you could lose that be aware of that. You know, if you're going to pay in instalments, I would say, you know, our limit on instalments is two thousand pounds. Okay, and that's because we don't want to be holding your money, and we want you to have the confidence in knowing that as well. Um, so, block booking schemes are okay, but there is that risk that if you're putting five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand pounds into a block booking scheme, that um, there's a potential you could lose your money just to get a cheaper rate. And aside from that, one thing that I have seen as well is that there was a school who took loads of money off people and then they were kind of limiting them to how much bookings they could have. So, you know, be careful is what I'm saying with block booking schemes. There are advantages to them, but there are severe disadvantages to them as well. But back to the intensive flying, that is a good way of saving money. And as such, there are things like our fast track course. So a fast track course generally is an intensive course of flying. If you're interested in our fast track scheme, you can get your license anywhere between three and 12 months, depending on your commitment. And um, we've seen lots and lots of students do it on that basis and save themselves a ton of money and get their license done in a much more economical manner. So that is tip, to, tip number 10, um, intensive or fast track courses or block booking schemes. So there are 10 ways you can look at funding your training or reducing the cost of your training. So I hope you found this episode useful and I hope it inspired you to find different ways to, to help fund your flight training. And if you did like the episode, please do join us on another one and like and subscribe to the channel. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.